Hey everybody, this is Josh with BTOP Live. I'm here with the legendary Fred Kipp uh, here in Kansas City at the Negro League Baseball Museum. And uh, the uh, Fred is the, the last Yankee Dodger, which he has a book out. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But can you explain to everybody what the last Yankee Dodger means? The last Yankee Dodger played for Brooklyn, L.A., and the Yankees. Yeah. That makes me that I'm the last one living that did that. Okay. There's about 13 of us left, 12 or 13 left that played in Brooklyn. Okay. So that limit, that's the big limiting factor, is playing in Brooklyn. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's cool. I moved to LA. I played in LA, and then again with the Yankees. Cool. So my assumption is you've played with a lot of different people that that we might recognize, or our yeah. viewers might recognize. Yeah. Who are some uh, of those? That was the. That was the the Yankees and the Dodgers in that in the late 50 mid to late 50s I think they won the pennant eight out of ten years so oh. they had some good teams through that era the old Dodgers you know Campanella, Newcomb, Hodges, Pee Wee, Schneider, yeah. Perillo yeah those guys went to the post every day and played yeah they went you know and the same way at the Yankees they had those superstars that, they won. They won ball games. They had because they had a lot of good athletes. Right. So did you? Uh, uh, what about like Tommy Lasorda? Do you know those guys? Or? Oh yeah. See, the Dodgers is a little bit unique in that everybody spring trained together. And yeah. there'll be for an old naval air base where they train pilots. So the Dodgers, we knew, we knew everybody. We, we associated with the big league club. They were had a little better barracks than we did. Oh yeah. But at cool. that time, they they didn't have a stadium in Vero Beach. Yeah. We, they trained there to get in shape, and then they moved to Miami and played their exhibition games there. Yeah. Until I guess it was probably '56 when uh, no, probably '58 or '9. The Orioles started playing in Miami, so they built a stadium in Vero Beach then. Okay. But they, the Dodgers moved to Miami and played their exhibition games. Yeah. So that's cool. That's how that worked. Yeah. So everybody, Lasorto, he was a spring training with everybody. He was a, he played in Montreal as a minor leaguer, I think, for five years. Really? In Montreal. Okay. Cool. Yeah. He was. Yeah. So what what year did you were you uh, what years were you active in baseball then? I, I started in 50, 1953. I rode a train from Emporia State 40 hours during Easter vacation. They didn't have spring breaks then. And tried out and signed and rode the train back. Oh, yeah. And then graduated and reported. My first year was Class B ball in uh, Miami, and then I got shipped up to Asheville. Okay. From yeah. there, I went in the service for 21 months. And then, uh, so that's when I was in the service. Then I come yeah. out and played uh, in Mobile and Montreal a couple of years, and the Dodgers. Yeah. In Brooklyn. Yeah. And like this, like I say, that's that's yeah. what makes me the last one. Right. That played in Brooklyn, L.A., yeah. and the Yankees. Right. Okay. Last living guy yeah. that did that. Well, what's your favorite field you played on? I I don't know. I mean, Brooklyn was small. Yeah. And of course. When I was with the L.A. Dodgers, played in the Coliseum, I didn't yeah. get to pitch at home much because they had that short left field fence. Yeah, and right. My first time up, I hit one off of it, and I, <laughs> and I was a line drive hitter, you know, a single hitter. I right. wasn't no home running. <laughs> right, right. So I mean, it, it was kind of a. Yeah. I didn't get to pitch at home a lot. Yeah. And then they finally, I think they moved into the new stadium out there in about right. 62 or 3, right. five years later. Right? Okay. So were you drafted for your pitching or for both? We, pitching and we weren't drafted then. Well, I mean, were you playing, yeah. did they want, were you valued for your, mainly for your pitching oh, or yeah. for both? Pitching, definitely pitching. Okay. I, yeah. I grew up in a little bitty town, Pickway, Kansas, and every, not every little town, but many of the little towns had town teams. And that's yeah. where we played. Play with old guys, young guys. Uh, right. Pickway's 150 people. We had two teams at one time. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. it, well, I didn't. They didn't have high school ball. Right. And uh, they had a 
Class D club in Iola where I went to high school in the KOM League, right. Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, okay. which was a real popular D league at that time, cool. right after the war, okay. the Second World War. Right. Cool. And I don't want to. I don't want to take up too much of your time because I know the people are still going to want to come sign these books. So let's let's talk about the book real quickly. Okay. Uh, the Last Yankee Dodger, which I know you just explained what that is. But uh, what are some of the things? If, if somebody were going to buy this book, what are some of the things they're going to read about in here? Well, it's pretty well the history of uh -huh. of me uh, playing. So like a playing memoir. In, playing in Pickway, and then I went to college. I played. Yeah. I went on. I went to college on basketball. Yeah. I played freshman basketball at K-State with okay. Tex Winters. All right. Do you recognize that name? Uh-uh. No. Tex Winters, he coached there and for pros, mm -hmm. and Michael Jordan. Okay. I mean, he's well, well, well known in, in yeah. basketball. Tex, anyway, I went there a semester at K-State and I went to Emporia so I could play both basketball and baseball. Mm -hmm. if I, I was on basketball scholarship, Division One school, K-State. You didn't play baseball when they had a spring session. You played basketball, so I went there so I could play both. Right. Okay. And then Very from cool. there, like I said, I signed uh, the coach at Washburn. My freshman year, I pitched a no-hitter against Washburn. Okay. McDonald was his name. He was a part-time scout for the Dodgers. He s sent me down to Florida to try out. It was a tryout. Had a big FA free agent on that <laughs> uniform uh, down in Florida, and I went. Then I went back, went back to K State or Emporia State. It was Kansas State teachers at the time, right? And I graduated. I reported to uh, Miami, and they were Class B. That was D was the lowest, then C, then D. Right. And I started in b-ball. I had a good year there, got drafted in the service, went in 21 months and come out. Right. And then yeah. it, it recorded, you know, it's in there about, I played for Billy Martin yeah. as the manager in Goodland, Kansas. Oh, really? He was at camp uh, in, San, in uh, Colorado Springs, uh, Carson, Camp okay. Carson. He was stationed out there in Goodland, Kansas, hired him to manage. I played with him. Right. There yeah. at, for him. In a, I went, I got out of the Army in July, 21 months, yeah. instead of 24. Back then you were drafted eight years, yeah. two years active. Right. And then I went, uh, uh, I got out of the service in 21 months because they was wanting to get everybody out. Okay. I applied to get out for baseball for seasonal employment, they about laughed at me. <laughs> and then, so I, I got out in uh, 21 months because I went back to school to get my master's degree. Okay. What was your degree in? <laughs> uh, in uh, education. Was education? My, education. My major was math and science. Yeah. I, I started out in PE. Yeah. That was too hard so I switched to math because I had, I had really good teachers in grade school and high school. Right. Yeah. So, I, I switched to math because it was easier for me. Right. It was good. That, that's weird. Uh, that's not the case for most people. Math is much, much harder. My wife's a chemist, so she has to do a lot of math and the types yeah. of chemistry she does. And so uh, I don't know how she does that. But yeah. um, but I don't want to take up too much more of your time. But I do You're want welcome, to, Dick. I appreciate you doing that. Let me tell the viewers here, guys. Um, you have a website, fredkip.com. Um, you can find these books there, and so what I was informed of is that if you want an autographed book to go through your website to get it, I it called, yeah, okay, okay, so so call Fred. You got here's the number, and you can get a um, an autographed version. If you order it off Amazon or something like that, you're just going to get the regular book with no autograph. So if you want Fred to sign it. Um, then uh, do it through the, uh, by calling Fred directly. But you guys also have um, different cards and stuff. Do people have access to these too? Yes. On that, so yeah. So uh, these are like five dollars each. If you, if you want just a card, uh, yeah. So these are these are pretty cool. They're like uh, uh, big baseball cards. 
So it's got its stats on there. Yeah, they're about pretty three, neat. three times, three or four times bigger than the regular yeah. basketball card. That's the way to go, because you can just put that in a frame at home, you know, just stick that in a frame. Okay. Uh, if you want to send Fred, I was just informed uh, by his lovely assistant over here. <laughs> If you want a signed ball from Fred, you can send that in. But I think probably the best way, uh, if you have any questions or anything, is just to email you guys or call directly and, and to, uh, to get that information. And you're based right here out of Kansas City, right? No, we live in Overland Park. You live in Overland Park? Yeah. Suburb okay. of Kansas City. Well, very cool, man. You live down in Oklahoma City now. Oh, yeah. You do live there now. Yeah, that's where I'm at now. So yeah. My old roommate, Don Demeter, is down there. Great guy. I think he's a Baptist preacher. Oh, yeah. Great guy. Everybody loved him. He's one of your old roommates? Yeah. And yeah. Jim Gentile lives down there. He grew up in California, but he married a An Atlanta OG. stewardess, I think, and lives in Oklahoma City. Okay, cool. Well, man, I'll get Bobby right. Morgan, the guy came through. He's doing an article on the remaining guys that played in Brooklyn. There was three of them in Oklahoma City. Demeter, Gentile, and Bobby Morgan. Okay. Bobby was a little bit ahead of me. Yeah. And then he come up and talk to me. Yeah. He's writing a book on it eventually. Cool. Yeah, this is what, there's so much history about stuff like that that I didn't know. I know I'm reading one about the Cubs right now. And it's just things we don't know about we, that we get to appreciate uh, as in, in this day and age where you guys like paved the way so we could do stuff like that. And so really appreciate you, man. And, um, and if you're ever down in Oklahoma City, Look me up. We'll, we'll do another. We'll get together. Go have you lunch got a card? I got. I'll take your card and I'll. Uh, I'll make sure I get you my information. Okay, is that you? Or? No, that's a. Uh, that's uh, somebody. Yeah, that's one. Okay, <laughs> but yeah, uh, just yeah. I get about. I get about two of those baseball cards a week. Okay. And it picks up in spring training. They pick up at World Series time. But I'll average two a week. Okay. They send me for autographs. Cool. I put a South address envelope in there. Yeah. I sign it, send it back. Yeah. Well, maybe we can get you a few more. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna let you. You know, hang out, buddy. We're 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 done. All right. So I'm gonna let. We'll let you guys go. We'll see you guys later. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.